Mm. Okay, so I told you I was going to unwind these primary coils for the EPG. So, here are two of them. Um, I'm just using spools I have laying around. Most of this is old, standard wire. Uh, 14 gauge, 12 gauge, whatever. Uh, so I made this quick little thing and basically I've got a piece of 3 8 this looks like all thread but it's not it's only threaded on the very ends here and here and I've got bearings that fit right on there put those in these vice grips and then zip tied the vice grips to my stand it was the only thing I really had available so that's what I used um, and so now it spins freely on these two bearing sets and I'm just unwinding it with the drill so I'll set the camera up unwind one real quick for you so basically Yeah, so the reason that I'm unwinding these, you can see the iron cores down there. The reason that I'm unwinding these is because I actually got this wire out of transformers, and I really don't think that these are exact, the exact same lengths. And so um, I've decided to take them off, rewrap them, make them a lot better. When I wrapped these, didn't quite have as many wrapping skills as I do now. I guess from wrapping all these EPG coils, I've gotten a little used to how to do this a little bit better. So I'm going to do that. So I'll let you know whenever I get to, to start wrapping here. There it is. Primary. For those of you who have not ever seen this, these are iron cores. I believe that was a 3 8 iron black pipe and I machined it to exactly the dimensions I would like made these plexiglass plates quarter inch and that's what I come up with so these are pretty much dead on 0 .63 0 .63 0 .65 0 .65 0 .61 0 .65 and a lot of that has to do with the fact that these are kind of sloppy just barely they're they're not compressed on there so tight that they don't move because otherwise I would have to set this screw into my copper and well that would be bad so the screws just barely tight just enough to hold it in place but that's what it looks like here are the uh, primary coils um, again this is a pulsing device and it's supposed to act as a linear actuator. Alright, so 
it uh, pulses one, two, three, four, five, six, and then starts over. And it literally drags the magnetic gas slash slurry through there. So, just to show you that one now, start to wrap her up. Kind of dark. Anyway, ran all these coils through the counter. <sighs> Wire straightener counter. You can see how nice some of these really are after they get run through the straightener. Look like sloppy mess last time, but um, yeah. So there you go. Um, let's see what do you got here on the counter. This was 488, 488, 495, 480, 480, 495. The potential difference. This one's seven. Oh, sorry. This one's 215 feet. This one's 208 feet, so a difference of about 7. So 7 feet of wire, probably not enough to worry about. Um, I mean, you're talking probably less than 0 .001 of an ohm or something. Uh, this is, mm, what size wire is this? Looks like 20, but there's 22. This looks like it's probably about 22, I don't remember. I did take this off of transformer, so that's why. But uh, yeah, so now it's time to rewrap. I uh, I did I reset these, and then I actually put some glue, super glue, right along the rim, just to hold that in place. Because that one single set screw, I couldn't tighten it tight enough without uh, ruining the copper on the inside. So I just uh, glued it, got these a little bit tighter, and glued them so they're a little bit straighter. Um, and yeah, so we'll wrap these really nicely and continue on our way with doing some more testing. I did get Pulse Fire out not too long ago, probably about two weeks ago. Played around with it, did some more thinking, uh, testing and testing out the Pulse Fire software. If you haven't seen Pulse Fire, check the description, I'll link it. Um, I don't even think it's down here, I think it's somewhere else, so. Yeah, alright. I'll let you know when I get them wrapped. Probably a new day. Pretty tired, didn't sleep much today. I'm gonna go take a nap. See ya soon. Uh, it's a new day. Uh, I took a really long cat nap. Anyway, here's what I got. I put this back on the rod, put it back in my drill, and just used the drill because uh, for the ends, they wouldn't fit through the hole in my holder right here. So basically I just wrapped them by hand with a drill. It actually worked pretty well. They all look much better than what they did. A little more happy with it. Um, finished a few details. I uh, got to relabel them. I didn't put them back on the same. So the labels are wrong so I gotta relabel them real quick. That won't take much time. And yeah so I want to show you that uh, I'll probably if I got enough time uh, if I got enough time I will show you what it looks like on the EPG if not the end thanks okay there they are um, all done so today uh, I do plan on having my live show today but it's going to be earlier in the day um, and also it's not going to be a late late show today got a few other things I got to take care of and that's what's going on so if you want to see uh, how to watch the live show check the description of this video and uh, what I'm going to be doing today on the live show is hooking this up to Pulse Fire and wherever it went let me grab it. There it is. This is Pulse Fire. Um, Arduino controlled pulse sequencer with a uh, GUI interface thanks to William over in the Netherlands. Did some major, major programming. And uh, I built this particular box. Um, got a circuitry on the side for the opto-isolators 
and then the MOSFETs are mounted on this plate on the bottom with the uh, fans. So that's all I'm going to be doing today is uh, playing with this. So, that's it. If you guys are watching this, actually, by the time this gets upload, uploaded, uh, I'll probably be live. So check out the live show. Mess around with some stuff and see what goes on. So peace out, guys. Thanks for your support. Have a good day. See ya.